They were just trying to do what most of us do every day, get home from work to see their families. But rush hour turned into a fiery nightmare when a packed commuter train leaving New York City slammed into an SUV. Tonight, we're learning about how the electrified third rail penetrated the lead car of that train. We're also hearing stories of survival and hanging over it all, the mystery. Why was that driver out there on the tracks? Here's ABC's Lindsay Davis. As a crane lifts the charred wreckage of a black SUV, the apparent culprit in yesterday's fiery Metro North crash, the train still smoldering nearly 24 hours later. As questions swirl tonight about just what caused the deadliest accident in the New York commuter rail's history. Basically, the big question everybody wants to know is why was this vehicle in the crossing? It started just like any ordinary commute home. The Express Metro North train departed from Manhattan's Grand Central Terminal at 5.44 p.m. Roughly 45 minutes later, Report an explosion on the tracks. The train rolling down the tracks at 58 miles per hour, approaching a railroad crossing. Just at that moment, according to accounts, a black SUV tries to cross, but the gate comes down, stopping it. The train, unable to slow down, keeps coming. Rick Hope was in his vehicle just behind that black SUV. The gate came down and hit the back of the car in front of me. She was trying to make it to the other side. The driver has now been identified as Ellen Brody, a mother of three from Edgemont, New York. I'm waiting for her to back up and she moves forward. And she moved forward probably 15 feet right in front of the train. Brody and her car were struck by the train, pushed a thousand feet down the track, dislodging the electrified third rail. The third rail, as we call it, penetrated the chassis of the automobile, came out sort of over the right rear tire and, and upward at an angle, and then into the first rail car. The collision, fueled by gasoline from the SUV, triggering a fire so hot it melted the windows off the side of the train. And a DOA in the train as well. I saw that had burned completely. I couldn't even imagine how many people were in there that had lost their lives. Chris Gross was a passenger in the first car. I was jolted out of my seat. And then what? Uh, flames. Um, I saw people behind me in the car falling over each other. We skidded, uh, skidded for, uh, I guess, a couple hundred yards. As we hit that thud, things started to at least appear to flying in the car and maybe it was sparks that were shooting off and there was just a lot of devastation. It was sort of hard to understand you know, given what had happened. Just a lot of destruction. Ellen Brody perished in the crash, as did five Metro North passengers riding in the first car of the train. Twelve others suffered injuries. It was a massive fireball, yeah. right? So what saved you? Well, a little bit of quick thinking. Um, one of the guys that fell on top of me uh, burnt his hands, but um, he's okay. Um, he broke the uh, emergency latch. Him and I both uh, pulled the door open, hopped out, and helped a few people out. People were yelling for a fire extinguisher to call 911. A lot of yelling, a lot of screaming, um, you know, crying. There are more than 209,000 railroad crossings in the United States. In 2014, there were 2,068 incidents between cars and trains that killed 239 people. That's why you have crossing gates and flashing signals. The train blows its horn. You have all these warnings, and some people just think that they can beat the train. While we still don't know why the SUV stopped on the tracks yesterday, in a similar incident, one woman says she simply froze. When I realized that there was just no way my car was going to make it off those tracks, I think I panicked and went into shock. Betsy Duvall had what is called the freeze response, unable to act, paralyzed by fear. Thankfully, a police officer was nearby. Man, come on, get back. Come on, get back. He said, well, you need to get out now because there's no time. A train is on its way. All I could do was just turn and watch it hit my car and just shove it down the tracks. Just to think that in an instant my life could have been just taken without any warning. Even with all the safeguards to warn people, accidents are still common and can be catastrophic. 
In Nevada, an Amtrak train carrying 220 passengers collided with a tractor trailer. There was a lot of smoke, so we decided to stick our head out one of the doors and saw that the train was on fire. I'm getting out of here. It was like a bomb exploded out of the war zone. It was crazy. Two people were killed and more than 100 injured. In Midland, Texas, four people were killed and 17 hurt when a train crashed into a parade float carrying wounded veterans in 2012. While these accidents are horrific, usually passengers inside the train are safe. Yesterday was different. Usually it is, it is not endangering the occupants of the train. Uh, we intend to find out what makes this accident different that caused this to be fatal to five people on board that train. Federal authorities tonight are looking for answers to many questions about this crash. Could the SUV driver have gotten out of the way? Why was the explosion so ferocious? And just what role did the electrified third rail play in the fatalities? What we intend to do is to put together that very play-by-play. -play. We want to put together a timeline to understand. One of the things we'll be doing, too, is a sight distance test to see that if you were stopped on the tracks, at what point could you be able to see a train, and at what point could the engineer of the train be able to see a stopped vehicle. But tonight, all those questions so far unanswered. For Nightline, I'm Lindsay Davis in New York.